Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most important, it could be the most important segment I've done this election. Hit subscribe right now to this channel. We're on our way to 200,000 subscribers. This is extremely important, and it's something nobody's talking about, and it's, it's something that somebody, that we should all bring to the forefront. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to view these news stories, but there is a Philadelphia Inquirer article, so get this viral, Philadelphia Inquirer article that I've talked about this election. The memory sticks used to program Philly's voting machines were stolen from election warehouse by Jeremy Roebuck and Jonathan Lai, September 30th, 2020. A laptop and several memory sticks used to program Philadelphia's voting machines were stolen from a city warehouse in East Falls. Official, officials cons confirmed Wednesday, setting off a scramble to investigate and ensure the machines had not been compromised. Okay. Is there direct evidence that the people who took these memory sticks used to program the voting machines in Philadelphia actually utilize them for criminal purposes to help Democrats? No, there's no direct evidence there. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if the tables were reversed, imagine the, docs, the dots connected by Democrats and media. But this is extremely, extremely important. It's not just this story. This is extremely important. It's not just this story. You can go to uh, Dr. K uh, the affidavit of Dr. Navid Keshavar's Nia. And he mentions the, cryptog the cryptographic key on DVS thumb drive reported stolen in Philadelphia, in Philadelphia was used uh, to alter vote counts prior to upchain reporting, since DVS uses the same cryptographic key for all its voting systems in all battleground states. The key allowed a remote operator con to conduct massive um, attacks on all battleground state data without being detected. Am I saying he's 100% accurate? He could be very well. I actually trust him a lot more than I trust... Um, all the experts saying that everything's fine, there's nothing to worry about, or that Russia stole the election with Facebook ads. But this is a cybersecurity expert. I conclude that a combination of lost cryptographic key contained on stolen USB memory cards, serious exploitable systems and software vulnerabilities, and operating system backdoor created the perfect environment to commit widespread fraud in all states where these systems were installed. Okay. This is extremely intriguing, important. Share this segment everywhere. Okay, get this segment viral. Hit subscribe right now to this channel. We're on our way to 200,000 subscribers. Am I saying that the Philadelphia Inqui Inquirer article, memory sticks used to program Philly voting machines were stolen from election warehouse by uh, Jer Jeremy Roebuck and Jonathan Lai, September 30th, 2020, where that article, where it says a laptop and several memory sticks used to program Philadelphia's voting machines were stolen from a city warehouse in East Falls, correlates directly to the accuracy of a top cybersecurity official's sworn affidav affidavit signed under penalty of perjury. So Dr. Nia, when he signed that, he talked about the stolen memory sticks and, and memory cards and, and information almost certainly being used to alter votes. He signed it, I, I declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America, the forego, foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge, pursuant to 28 U.S.S. 1746, November 25th, 2020. This man is a hero. This man is a hero. <laughs> you stick up for President Trump, you go to bat for 74 million Trump supporters, you're swimming upstream you're doing something that is not going to get you immediate praise long term you will be you're viewed as a hero right now by 74 million trump supporters but long term you will definitely be viewed by history as helping save this country okay democracy is not looking at debbie wasserman schultz cheating bernie sanders and being forced to resign and saying oh well you know what that's probably not probably won't happen 
again in the, in the general election or in the 2020 primary election. It happened again, and it almost certainly happened on a grandiose scale in 2020. But here, Southfield City Clerk charged with six election law felonies. This is a Michigan state, the state of Michigan, the attorney general and the secretary of state in Michigan. This is a Detroit Free Press article, and there's a Detroit News article. This is by Kathleen Gray, Detroit Free Press. The Democrat 38 allegedly altered 193 absentee voter records, but the changes, okay, the changes, of course, did not impact, no, no irregularities ever impact elections, don't worry. But she did so on the computer. The Democratic election official was charged with falsifying returns uh, or records, forging forgery of, of public record, misconduct in office, and three counts of using a computer to commit a felony. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why is it very, very important? Why is this article, and how does this article tie in with, why is this article important, and why, why does it tie in with the Philadelphia Inquirer and Dr. Nia's affidavit? I'm using public record knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, if you look, there's a Detroit News article that is written by Christine Ferretti in the Detroit News, September 23rd, 2019, Southfield City City Clerk charged with six felonies tied to November election. This woman should be completely exonerated, and I'll tell you why. They're trying to make a sacrificial lamb out of her. And if you think that I'm just doing this because I'm, I'm... well, I'm not a Republican, but if you think that I'm just doing this because I'm a Trump supporter and I just blindly follow any political movement, that's not true. When I was on the left and I was a lifelong Democrat, I wrote in the Huffington Post, you can look it up, President Obama should pardon Red Fawn to honor standing rock water protectors. I wrote that in December December uh, of 2016, December 8, 2016. Thank God she recently was released. But President Obama should have pardoned this woman. And I explain exactly why in the article, President Obama should pardon Red Fawn to honor Standing Rock water protectors. What what does that article have to do with the fact that I'm focusing on this Southfield City clerk, a woman, another woman of color, a black woman, who is being persecuted really by the state of Michigan and by the city of Detroit? Well, because... Democrats, this is how they work. They want, they want a sacrificial lamb. They want to, for public relations purposes, almost certainly find one individual who very likely engaged in, in a practice that a great many Democrats engage in. And they want to say, okay, well, you utilized your ability to alter votes in a computer, but we don't, we don't do that. That's not standard practice. And a it's not standard fa- practice. And furthermore, <laughs> the actual data used to program <laughs> the election in Pennsylvania was stolen. Has nothing to do, do you understand, has nothing to do with the 2020 election or the affidavit from a cybersecurity expert, Dr. Nia, or all the statistical and mathematical anal- uh, anal- uh, analysis and anomalies from statisticians and mathematicians who say, yeah, this doesn't make sense. Biden could have won fair and square, but the point is, how did he win? How on earth did this man go from being down on November 3rd to suddenly up in seven states when he was losing nationally and underperforming Clinton among people of color? And um, Democrats lost miserably in the House lost 13 seats or so, and failed to take the Senate, lost the state legislature. So you can't say that President Trump, and then lost Ohio and Florida, so you can't say that President Trump is just really, really, um, it's just so uh, unpopular nationwide. He's obviously quite popular nationwide if Republicans were able to do all of that. But they're going after this woman for something that was done on a computer that seems to be standard practice because they want to make an example. They want to, like I said, create a sacrificial land. They want to create the image, the public relations spin that this is just one person who unilaterally on her own did something that was just not accepted 
in the Democratic Party. Here, the report notes that 193 absentee voter qualified voter files were altered in the computer system. The records show that Hawkins, okay, the Democratic uh, election official computer and unique name, quote, made the alterations in the computer system to QVF for these voters. The complaint says, you think somebody who, know, who had that memory stick could have possibly done the same thing? I'm asking questions. I'm not, I, yeah, this is not tinfoil stuff because if the tables were turned, they would simply buy a dossier. See, Democrats, they had nothing on Trump, so they purchased the dossier. Like, literally, they had nothing, so they purchased their myth. And then they got a, a bunch of smart people and a bunch of top officials saying the same thing. And then, of course, Wikipedia doesn't even mention anything. Well, well you know, it's, a, it's just it was a government uh, investigation. So what? They had no direct evidence. I have no direct evidence linking the Detroit News article on this Democratic official to the Philadelphia Inquirer article on memory sticks and voting. So, I mean, the Detroit, so, I mean, what I'm saying is it could very well, so one is in Michigan, one's in Philadelphia, but you have, you have, the same type of thing taking place in numerous states. So in, in, in Philadelphia, you have the issue of people that perhaps aren't election officials gaining access to voting machines through memory sticks that were stolen. In Michigan, you have systemic issues with election officials. One official in particular that was singled out, or, or as they, they say, caught, and it was a rare instance, altering dates, basically backdating ballots in, 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 a, in a computer system, which, interestingly enough, also uh, is supported when, by uh, Richard Hopkins, the whistleblower who did not re retract his statements, even though the Washington Post said he did, according to officials they know. But in a YouTube segment, he himself stated that he didn't back, back, back did anything, or that he, sorry, that he didn't backtrack anything, and that he heard of, uh, his, of his supervisor at the Postal Service telling people to backdate ballots. And in Detroit, they did, this woman is being charged for doing so via a computer. And this is the state of Michigan is going after this woman in, I think, the most unfair way. So I think she should be exonerated. And like I said, I wrote the article uh, 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 that Red Fawn should be exonerated. I think this woman should be exonerated because it's the same type of thing. Democrats are in charge, and they want a public relations. Well, at least in this, in this instance, you have a, you have a situation where this, this, these felonies might be widespread to the point where they're saying, okay, well, we found one person, it's taken care of, and there is no widespread conduct in this manner. But this is Michigan.gov, Southfield clerk bound over, over bound, uh, South clerk, Southfield clerk bound over for trial on six felony counts. Uh, okay, so Atter agency attorney general, June 11, 2020, Lansing. Judge Michelle Friedman uh, Apple has bound over a Southfield clerk on all six felony counts brought, brought her. So her name is Sharikia Hawkins. On six felony counts brought her Michigan Attorney General Dan Dana Nessel announced today, June 11th. Look, look what they did to this woman. And now they're saying that it could never happen in Michigan. And they're saying, oh, it could never happen in Pennsylvania, even though a Philadelphia judge of elections uh, might be going to prison for for allegedly stuffing the ballot box. But here, stemming from the November 6, 2018 election, Hawkins was charged as follows. Count 1, election law, falsifying return records, a five-year felony, felony and or $1,000. Count 2, forgery of a public record, a 14-year felony. Count 3, misconduct in office, a five-year felony and or $10,000. Are you kidding me? They said this is not possible. They said that all the affidavits... Uh, are meaningless. The affidavits correlate to exactly what the state of Michigan is going after this woman for. And the affidavits correlate to exactly what happened with the stolen uh, USB drives 
in Philadelphia, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. And if you say, oh, you're grasping at straws, I am simply pointing out the obvious. You can make your own. You can make your, your own. It, it, just think of things if tables were reversed. What do you think the Washington Post would be doing right now? What do you think these journalists who obsess over taking down Trump would be doing right now if, if all of this information was public record and suddenly uh, Trump came back in the middle of the night when, after losing, after losing Florida and Ohio? President hasn't lost an election after, like winning, after winning Florida and Ohio in like over 100 plus years. Count four, using a computer to commit a crime, election law, falsifying records, uh, returns records, a seven-year felony under $5,000. Count five, using a, co- a computer to commit a crime, forgery of a public record, a 10-year felony under $10,000. Count six, using a, com- a computer to commit a crime, misconduct in office, a seven-year felony under $5,000. So I'm going, kind of going back between Philadelphia and Detroit in this segment, talking about the issues that the state's basically faced the same issues. In Philadelphia, there was technology that was, there, there was data that was stolen on memory cards, memory sticks, that could be used to do the same thing that the state of Michigan is going after an election official for. The complaint alleges that the defendant, while serving for the clerk of the city of Southfield, used a computer to fraudulently alter or modify the qualified voter file after the 2018 election to falsify, falsely reflect that previously logged absentee ballots were void due to arriving in envelopes that were not signed by the voter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest, so President Trump has to, to publicize this. He has to publicize this. This is extremely important. This is the, this is the biggest news story right now because you connect these dots and they're not really like, I'm not into like a connect the dots type. I'm not that type of person. Oh, connect these dots. Da, da, da. But I used public record knowledge. Philadelphia Inquirer. Memory sticks used to program Philly's, vo- Philly vo- Philly's voting machines were stolen from election warehouse. Then you have the affidavit signed under penalty of perjury by Dr. Nia that cites the, actual, the Philadelphia Inquirer story. Then you have the Detroit News, and you have Michigan.gov, and you have the Detroit Free Press saying that a Democratic election official altered the dates and and, and 193 uh, ballots via the computer system in Philadelphia. And they're saying that this is not possible in, in Detroit or Philadelphia. I'm sorry, in Detroit. But they're saying that, I'm getting mixed up, they're saying it's not possible in Detroit and Philadelphia. But these are, the, these are the cities where Biden outperformed while underperforming everywhere else. How does that make any sense? How does Biden do worse among non-white voters and then in, in miraculously outperforms in cities that he needs to outperform in? All the while in Georgia and Arizona, he, according to Target Smart, Republicans outperform Democrats. So please, somebody explain this. They keep on saying, he lost, he lost, you know, get over it. It's like, no, you kidding? I'm not, a, I'm not like a person, I'm not like a progressive that allows myself to be cheated, okay? I used to be what I thought was whatever on the left. The left, like, loves getting cheated. I don't. 74 million Trump supporters don't. So I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I'm a person, like I said, who is telling you that this, there's a woman in Michigan, that the system is trying to to harm, just like I told you uh, in 2016 in my Huffington Post article regarding a Native American woman. And I'm telling you there's a woman in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan, that they're trying to uh, basically blame for their own systemic corruption or utilize as like this sacrificial lamb. Give me your thoughts below. President Trump should President Trump should force or should pressure. He can't because it's federal and this is state, although I, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the attorney general. He should pressure Governor Whitmer to pardon um, Sharikia Hawkins. He needs to do that. There's political benefit for him, but I'm talking about there's a moral, there's a moral element here. 
Shariki Hawkins should be pardoned immediately. Immediately. Because Democrats are hiding behind this notion and utilizing her as, oh, well, look, we as, as a public relations stunt, oh, look, we're going to go after this woman. When almost certainly what she did is absolutely nothing to the widespread corruption that's almost certainly taking place. Give me your thoughts below. This woman, Sharika Hawkins, should be pardoned. I mean, he can't, he, I don't think he can pardon anyone for state crimes, but the, 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 the charges should be dropped considering the 2020 election and what's going on. <clears throat> because they said that it's not possible. They said, that, they said that none of this is possible in Michigan, right? And in terms of the, <laughs> in terms of the stolen, um, in terms of the stolen USB drives in Philadelphia, where'd they go? 